everyone. I'm Sarah and I'm coming to you from San Francisco from my art studio and I'm going to answer some questions for Gallery Irving. The first question is about Victorian flower symbolism and I get very geeky about that and so the gallery wanted me to elaborate. Um, I think that it's very sweet that uh, in Victorian times and long before, um, each flower carries a specific meaning. And so uh, you could put together a bouquet that um, could be read like a sentence and give that to someone else and they would understand the meaning. Uh, but I love that. But when I paint, I don't paint um, specifically for uh, per flower meaning. I just paint depending on um, my emotions and uh, what the flowers mean to me, my memories of them, um, what emotions the colors of them bring to me now. Uh, yeah, so it's about my emotional response to the flowers rather than um, a th thinking response to them. Okay. The next question is, do I have a favorite flower and why? Uh, and what flowers do I like to plant in my garden in San Francisco? Um, I don't have a favorite flower. That's like asking me, what is my favorite color of paint? Um, I love them all and I love them each for their own individual uh, qualities. And, uh, but putting together a garden is like putting together a painting. And so what matters is how the colors are interwoven through and how they, uh, the flower colors bounce off each other, um, how they relate to each other. Uh, so it's, it's like a painting and I love that. Um, but no, I don't have a specific flower that I love the most. Um, the flowers that I plant in my garden, uh, I tend to prefer old fashioned cottage flowers. Um, but in unusual colors. So I love hollyhocks uh, that are, my favorite ones are dark maroon and they're so dark that they look almost black. And same with bachelor buttons. Um, there's some maroon ones that are beautiful. Uh, and I also love poppies, every type of poppy from, um, little tiny uh, orange Moroccan poppies. Um, I love uh, California poppies. Um, there's all different types of California poppies, not just the ones that uh, you think about when you think California poppies. And um, up to giant lavender bread seed poppies with, uh, yeah, just beautiful middles, uh, really deep, purple middles and then um, like light lavender on the outside. So that's what I like to grow. Um, and with my gardens, I try and smash everything in and it's survival of the fittest. So um, that's, yeah, that's my gardens. Okay. Series of watercolor paintings that I've done over the years and um, and I found that over time I was titling them um, as my own little one or two sentence poems and eventually I felt like they were good enough to stand on their own as works of art on their own and I felt like they're very evocative um, and often full of longing for connection. Um, for instance, one of them is titled Braid Your Hair Into Mine and Whisper In My Ear. So 
works like that. Um, and uh, so they sprung forward and they're simply text um, framed on a, just a simple white background and uh, really deep, dark black text uh, like poems. And we has chosen some of those to be in the show. So I'm excited about including them. It's the first time I'll be showing them. The next question is, am I more of an early bird or a night owl? And which time of day do I find myself to have the most creative energy? So I try to paint as soon as possible in the morning. Um, so I guess that makes me an early bird. <laughs> I am the most caffeinated at that point, and um, my mind is firing on all cylinders, and uh, the distractions of the day, um, like laundry and housework and grocery shopping and errands, uh, aren't able to take hold and uh, overrun my painting time. So I try and paint first thing in the morning. And the next question is, do I listen to music while I paint? And yes, <laughs> I listen to uh, music almost all the time while I paint. It rarely works for me to uh, listen to books on tape or podcasts um, and I find I need to listen to something but uh, music um, can keep me going while painting and distracts a part of my brain uh, that uh, maybe the auditory part and allows me to focus on the visual part um, painting uh, and so it's important to create a routine when you have a painting practice so that when you come in in the morning um, or when you start your practice, you can follow the routine uh, so that you don't freeze up. So you don't have a paintbrush in hand and you're like, oh my God, what do I do? So you're just following the routine and then you can paint. Uh, and my routine for the past 20 years, so for a long time, um, is to listen to an album. And the album has always been Nancy Griffith's One Fair Summer Evening. And uh, it's just really important to me um, <laughs> to listen to that album. I almost always listen to it. Every now and then I can get away with not listening to it, not doing my routine. But yeah, I listen to that album. And then from there, my painting uh, hours can be long. And so I um, don't stick to any one genre. I can listen to anything from uh, Brandenburg concertos to um, dream pop to 1970s Afro psychedelic funk. So it's all good. Okay, thank you. And um, I hope you guys can come to see my show at Gallery Urbane. Uh, I'm really excited and I want to thank Ree um, for the opportunity. And um, I hope to see you all there. Okay, thank you.